Let's welcome to the show the spokesperson for the State Department under former President Trump, Morgan Ortega. It's good to see you. Great to be Thanks. in studio with you. Great to be back. Okay, let's get your reaction to former President Trump. He is pushing back hard on the president of Mexico, saying, you know what, I want $20 billion in order to stop the border surge. Let's listen to former President Trump here. Watch this. In on 60 Minutes, the president of Mexico, and says, we're not going to shut down our border until you change your policy on Cuba and change your policy on Venezuela. Is it okay for the Mexican president to dictate American policy? And he said he wants $10 billion essentially just to talk. $10 billion to talk. And that's come out since. And no, that wouldn't happen with me. Building the what wall. What changed? It's very simple. Lack of respect for the president. They would never say that to me. They would never say, before we even took it, they want $10 billion a year. Mexico just asked for $10 billion a year. They would never ask. I wouldn't give them 10 cents. They know that. Wouldn't give him a dime. What do you think? <laughs> I, he's he's so right. First of all, whenever Obrador won, uh, Trump was already president at that point, and a lot of people were fretting because Obrador is very far left, and they thought, how are these two ever going to get along? You know what? They actually ended up negotiating uh, the the trade deal between U.S., Canada, the United States, USMCA, which was which was uh, renegotiating and Mexico, yeah, and Mexico, obviously, yeah, from uh, renegotiating that deal from the 90s, and we started to work together incredibly closely on border security issues. See, what happens with somebody like Obrador or any of these leaders around the world, they get away with what they think they can get away with. And mm -hmm. I have to say, President Trump was absolutely right in that clip that there is no way that Lopez Obrador would demand $10 billion or even 10 cents with him or as a precursor. Yeah. But by the way, this is just a precursor to negotiations, like give me the money before, before we can even talk. It, it's crazy. It's ludicrous to me. And people are doing this. Leaders are doing this around the world simply because they can know that they, they know that push. they can yeah. Away with it well, less. let's look at this recent AP NORC poll. Seven out of ten disapprove of mm. Biden's handling of the border. Look at this number. Four in ten Democrats disapprove. Do, so do 55 percent of black adults, more than seven out of ten Hispanic adults. You know, this recent Pew poll, 45 percent of Americans describe the situation at the border as a crisis. And then you look, then you see what's going on, uh, you know, in Texas, where a judge just recently let go over the weekend. You know, people who were arrested in that border riot because yeah. they weren't ready for the detention hearings. What do you make of that? Well, in the new Fox News polling I saw this morning uh, when I was on Outnumbered on Fox News was showing that uh, Biden's approval rating for his immigration policy is around 30 percent. And what's really shocking to me in the polls that you were just talking about and in the new Fox News polls is how much independents are unhappy with his handling of the border, of immigration, of the economy. So it's very puzzling to me from a political perspective, Liz. I'm thinking, how can you go into an election year, into November, with these low numbers, with independents? Not, not even bringing Republicans and Democrats, just independents into it. Uh, I think that they are trying to appease their base. They're willing to sacrifice independents because they think we'll just talk about January 6th and abortion and that'll get the independents back with us. That's their calculation, I think. I can't make sense of it any other yeah, way. Yeah, we hear you loud and clear. You know, this. we'd like your reaction to this. Retired General Frank McKenzie, he commanded the U.S. forces yep. in, in the Middle East, as you well know, including the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Let's listen to him warning about ISIS here. Let's listen to this. Watch. So ISIS-K in particular, but, but ISIS in general, uh, has a strong uh, desire to attack our homeland. We should believe them when they say that. Uh, they're going to try to do it. And I, so I think the threat is growing. Uh, it, it, it's, it's begun to grow uh, as soon as we left Afghanistan and took pressure off ISIS-K. So I think we should expect further attempts of this nature against the United States as well as our partners and other nations abroad. I think this is inevitable. But Morgan, yeah. nearly about 1,600, 1,600 terror suspects, including those on the watch list, have been caught trying to cross at all ports of entry, including the border. And, you know, yeah. there was an ISIS connect, connection and a smuggling network at the southern border. So yeah. why are we playing with fire here uh, just a generation after 9-11? Uh, and just a few weeks after the attack by ISIS-K in Moscow and in, in, in yeah. Russia. Uh, I have been warning about this for the past year and a half. ISIS-K, ISIS Khorasan, that's the ISIS affiliate in Afghanistan, has a foothold in every province in Afghanistan. And here's the crucial point, Liz. We were told when President Biden removed every troop out of Afghanistan and all 
of our uh, counterterrorism uh, intelligence and capabilities, we were told that they would have over the horizon strike capability without U.S. forces presence in Afghanistan. If that is true, if that is still true, why are we not striking ISIS-K today? Interesting. Morgan, you're so smart. Thank you for <laughs> joining us. It's good to have you in the studio yeah. with us. We appreciate you so much.